Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to continue answering some of the questions in relation to what is the role of a clinical neuropsychologist in the hospital. In this case it's going to be in relation with head trauma. So without further ado, let's get started. So what we do is we always do different protocols. If you come with a head trauma case, we're going to evaluate how this happened, if we have MRIs or any scans, we're going to try to look into them and see which areas of the brain were affected so we can interpret it and say, okay, this area was affected, so I presume their memory is going to be affected, the language is going to be affected, the attention is going to be affected, and so on. So in that way, we need to know what the head trauma was, how it happened, when it happened, how long ago it happened, because it is crucial to not do an evaluation in a really close space of time when this had happened. It is super important to keep in mind that we as clinical neuropsychologists, we cannot evaluate someone that had a head trauma a week ago, two weeks ago, because this patient is still in the peak of what it had happened and it's not the way this person is going to end up being in terms of their cognition. So if for instance, let me give you an example, if there's someone that had a car accident and it lost consciousness and then I try to evaluate this person a week after, maybe this person has the consciousness back but their capacities of memorizing, paying attention and speaking are not going to be at the best. So for us it makes no sense to evaluate this person right away. We have to wait a certain amount of time to be able to interpret how this person could evolve. There's no actual definitive answer to how this person is going to turn out until there's a whole year of rehabilitation that has occurred from the accident of the head trauma till that point. So it is crucial to be able to understand this protocol of steps and timing. We cannot evaluate a, a person right away, we have to wait a certain amount of time once this is available, we have to test all the cognition, all the aspects, and to be able to grasp how this person is doing as in today, but also doing follow-ups. We need to see how this person is evolving, and we have to be super insistent that this person has some type of rehabilitation. If it's going to a center because this person was able to afford it, or it was offered to him, or at home by themselves. We have to make sure this patient is cognitively active, which means that they are doing something that requires some kind of effort in their brain, so reading, doing math exercises, playing chess, doing sudakus, whatever you can think of that implies an effort. That way this person is going to be stimulating the brain and the neurons and the connections and this is going to help recovery a lot. So I always insist on rehabilitation, but it's pretty standard in general when these cases happen and once this had happened for a whole year you can reevaluate again and see if what you predicted that this could have been the result it is better or worse and normally with people that had really severe head traumas I think there's an annual evaluation so you're able to see how this person is evolving and it's kind of like when you go to the doctors and you get your blood test it is kind of the same for them they have to keep on coming so you can evaluate their progress. So you can have when it happened, a year later, two years later, three years later, and you can see how this person is evolving and hopefully is going up in the progress and not down. So that was the end of the video. This is what I wanted to talk about in relation to head trauma. This is what I know and what I've seen in the hospital so far. So if you like, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!